Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Psychom Chats with Nziggy. And you know what we do? It's all about Ooh. chatting to science communicators and getting to know a little bit more about their journey, why they do what they do, what do they find so interesting about their work, and you know, yeah, and why Psychom? And also, it's always interesting to know why people end up in the sciences and how they end up there. So we're not going to waste much time. Today we have Priyanka, Dave Chand joining us. And in the background, you might hear a little guest also joining us because you have to start them young, right? You have to start them young and get them in the zone and so that they love science by the time they're older. So I'm not going to waste much time. Let's bring Priyanka right in. Uh, and remember, use that comment section to, you know, ask questions and engage and engage and engage. Priyanka, good evening. Hi, Tiki. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. And how are you? I'm all right, thanks. And I'm glad you've got uh, a young guest with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you might hear him in the background a little bit, just joining in the conversation. And also, it might happen that he might move my equipment as well. So if I happen to disappear for a second or two, we know that somebody decided I don't need <laughs> the equipment. <laughs> you got your own technician. <laughs> yes, yes, he's like, I'll do it for you. So, yeah, but we're going right into this chat. Thank you so much for joining and, you know, um, for giving us your time. Um, I see she's currently paused a little bit. That's probably because the network is still finding itself. That tends to happen. So I'm not, we're not too worried. We're not too worried. Let's just give it a second or two. Okay. All right, um, she had a little bit of trouble there. Let's see if we can bring her back in. Let's see if we can bring her back in. Um, and yeah, and let's see if we can bring her back in. Okay. Sorry, sorry, okay. I didn't think my, my network was a bit faulty there. <laughs> It's okay. it's okay. You're back. You're back. That's all that matters. Yeah. And I know obviously today we're doing it a little bit early, but don't worry if people haven't managed to watch it. I always save the IG live so they can always watch it later. So we'll just share it afterwards. People can still be part of the conversation, even if they were not part of the conversation right now. So perfect, let's perfect. get started. Let's go right into it because, yeah, it's a busy day and everybody's busy. So, yeah, let's get to know you a little bit, Priyanka. For somebody who's never met you, um, who is Priyanka Dave, Dave, Dave Chan? <laughs> the, this question is always a tricky one because it's like, what do you add? But I'd like to say that Priyanka Dave Chand is a hardworking person uh, and she's currently doing her PhD um, at Vist University at the School of Geosciences. Um, in terms of, uh, I, I firmly believe in mentorship. I believe in inspiring and motivating students as well as helping one another. I'm a firm believer of that because I know that everyone, if you can make anyone's journey easier, it's um, always a great thing to do. And I mean, I would love that as well. Um, in terms of just my uh, professional career thus far, I did my undergrad in geology and geography. Um, I did my honors in what was considered environmental geology. And then through my master's, I moved to geochemistry uh, and paleontology because it was, it was quite interesting research uh, that I did there. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. That's so cool. So obviously, you say you did geo, um, geosciences and you're a geoscientist now and obviously doing a PhD. How did you end up in geosciences? And like, never mind just geosciences, but how did you end up in the sciences in general? That is a good question. So I'm going to be straight up honest with you, Tiki. Back then, I... I always make this joke, but it's true. My first job ever when I was a kid, I wanted to be a cashier. <laughs> yeah, I wanted okay. to be a cashier. 
thought it was fantastic. It was it was cool watching those people because it's it's who you also you exposed to. You know, you go to the shop and you see these people do things, and it looks like fun. Um, and then eventually, at some point, I wanted to be a teacher, wanted to be um, an archaeologist, and at the end, I drifted towards geology and geosciences because um, I enjoyed geography very much in school. And I think a little bit had to do because my dad is also a geography teacher, and so I think it kind of inspired me. Um, but in that in that way, again, it's who I've been exposed to at that young age, and that kind of drew me to the, the geosciences and the sciences. And I realized uh, when I was young, I realized it was so much of fun to like mix things. To mix, I remember my sister and I when we were young, we would take like little bottles, we put water, we'd mix a little soap. It's like we were doing science experiments. So since then, I had that little. I was inquisitive. I was quite. Um, I always wanted to see how things worked, or, or that sort of thing. So my mind was very much drawn to the sciences. Ah, okay. It's interesting that um, you know you said first you wanted to be a cashier because these are the people you see every day. These are the people you're around, and I'm assuming you had very friendly cashiers because it's just like, oh my word, they always get to smile at everybody and they get to meet all of these different people. So it kind of actually makes sense why you'd want to do that, which actually brings us to the next question or one of the questions I wanted to ask you about mentorship and who you see, you know? Um, you are very passionate about mentorship, you know. Um, okay, so Bianca's going to be back in a little bit. We've just lost her. Okay. Oh no, we have filters doing that. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so you just uh, you just froze for me, and Tiki. Uh, okay, what is the it's question? fine. It's fine. Did you hear my question? Uh, no, sorry, if you could please repeat it. Okay, no problem. So we're obviously talking about how you said when you were growing up, you wanted to be a cashier because these are the people you are around. These are the people you saw all the time. And I can imagine it's because, you know, they were so friendly. You were, you were fortunate to have very friendly cashiers, you know, who are very friendly to you. And they probably made you smile. And you're thinking, I want to make people smile. I want to meet people all the time and so forth. Which brings us to something that you're very passionate about, which is mentorship. You know, why are you so passionate about mentorship and what does mentorship actually mean? Okay, no, that's, that's a very good question. So, yes, I'm quite passionate about mentorship because um, specifically right now at the moment, I am a student mentor. So I do mentor young uh, geoscientist students um, within the VIT space. And why I'm so passionate about it is because I remember when I was in undergrad, how, it, how overwhelming it can be, how to know where do you go, what do you do, who do you speak to. Um, back then, I used to speak to uh, older students and I used to go to them and ask them, you know, how did you find this field trip or how did you do that? And for me, I'm very passionate about it because I believe I want to be the mentor I wish I had back then. Um, I believe it's very much, it's so important to help one a person. If you have the experience and you can make someone else's journey easier, why not do that? I mean, um, one of the ways that I do science communication, I mean, you, your platform focuses on that. One of the ways that I do that is actually through mentorship. Um, I get to interact with the undergraduate students. Um, I get to tell them about my research. And it's always so, it's always so so fulfilling when you hear them how shocked or stunned they are about the work I do because in the geosciences a lot of people and unfortunately their minds are very much um, mining when they hear geoscience or geology it's mining <laughs> And so when I tell people, oh, I'm working on calcium isotopes and dinosaur fossils, and, you know, there's a range of things that we can do in the geosciences space, um, you know, it opens up so many, so many things and so many avenues. And so I believe mentorship is so important because we get to share our experiences with other people. We get to tell them, okay, this is how I navigated a space that maybe you're in, uh, or maybe I can guide you or can pr provide some insight in order to make your journey um, easier. I mean... We, I, I'm sure you can relate as well, whether you're in the university space or the workspace, but having someone who is senior to you or has more experience uh, or can somehow provide some guidance, it makes the journey so much easier. I agree. I agree. I just have to mute now and again so that we can actually hear what you're saying and not what my little assistant is saying. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Um, you know, I really, really like your passion for mentorship and how you take it because 
it really is like that, especially when you move into a not so common field like geology and geography and so forth, you know? And like you said, most people think it's mining. That's what I would be thinking as well. Mining, you probably just, um, maybe the next closest thing is studying rocks um, and, and stuff like that, you know? So which brings us to what are you studying? What is your research about? And why is your research so important? Okay, thank you. So, so my research focuses on using calcium isotopes, so calcium from fossilized tooth enamel to identify who are the herbivores, who are the carnivores, who is eating who, basically to reconstruct ancient ecosystems. And why I find my research important is because we can understand what happened then, the dynamics in a past ecosystem, and can we then say, okay, can we then apply this model to modern day ecosystems? You know, there's always the talk of the next big mass extinction or the extinction event that's going to be happening. And so if something happens in an ecosystem, how will it be impacted? Can we learn from the past in order to understand or predict the future in that sense. Um, another reason to why I find my research important on, in the whole is that I, it's multidisciplinary. So basically I'm using a geochemical toolbox to understand paleontological samples. So it's again not just that straight and narrow path of you just doing um, this this type of work or this field, and that's the only thing you're doing, but it's incorporating two different fields in order to get, a, an, to get an answer or get an understanding. And so that's one of the reasons why um, I was quite interested because uh, in honors, I, up to honors, it's, I was dealing with rocks, rocks, rocks. And then when I spoke to my now um, master's, well, PhD supervisor, and he said to me, how would you like to work on dinosaurs and crocodiles? And I was like, what? in geosciences, in geology, in this building that we look at rocks. Um, and so that grabbed me because I thought it's such a unique, it's such a unique research. Um, it's so multidisciplinary that I think um, it's something that we need to do more of. We need to allow people to expand their mindset and say, you know what, you don't have to just do this. You don't have to just stick in the in the lane, the usual lane, or or you know what everyone thinks of it. You can be diverse and you can do multidisciplinary exciting science. I like that. I like the multidisciplinary part of it, you know, because for the longest time, disciplines have always existed almost like in silos. And only now are people realizing that, listen, we need each other across board. It's not a matter of um, just this, it's not a matter of just this one person and not the other person. And this is what we are doing. But like coming together as different experts in different fields. Okay. Our little one is crying. Ah, <laughs> no. Okay. So I was like, please. Okay. It's true. just agreeing. It's like, yes, yes, yes. The other one's like, yes, this is so true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like, so for you, what did you find challenging with this whole multidisciplinary thing? Because obviously it required you to learn a little bit more about other fields which you wouldn't have initially gone into um, in your undergrad or even dreamed of studying. Oh, yes, yes, very true. I mean, uh, moving into the space, it was it's a new field, a new space for me. Um, and it was very much trying to break uh, people's mindsets because, you know, it's always just like, everyone was working on rocks and now here I am coming with something different. And so it was breaking that mindset as well as yeah, I had to take the initiative and say, you know what, you've got to learn something new in order to progress because I was very much more on the rock side. And so I then had to dig deeper in paleontology. Pun. There's a little pun in there. <laughs> but I had to... <laughs> and so it was, it was very much a learning curve because, you know, you think, okay, I'm taking on this whole research in a field that is new to me, but that's the exciting part because you get to learn more, you get to uh, push the boundaries and say, okay, this is what's happening in this field, learn, I mean, sometimes I read these paleontological papers or I'm in these discussions and it's like, it blows my mind. I'm like, okay, wow, well, this is quite interesting. So I'm always glad that I can have the best of both, that I can look at the geoscience, um, the geochemistry part of it, as well as the paleontology part of it. So it, um, it was quite challenging, I, I won't lie, when I started looking at the paleontological part. But um, ever since I'm so thankful that I've had such uh, good support, either from teammates or even my supervisors as well, who are able to, who are able to guide me and assist me in growing my paleontological knowledge.
Yeah, that's that's really that's really cool. I really like it. So you are somebody like we obviously already mentioned you into mentorship and so forth, and you want to help guide people. And you are currently doing a PhD with geology and geography. It's a very niche field in a way. So if we have somebody who's currently watching, who's in high school, or maybe currently pursuing um, a, a, a you know, BSc in geology and, and so forth, and they're thinking, where am I going to work? Or what am I going to do with this? What could you say to them? That is a very good question. So um, again, back then when I was in university, uh, matric, and when you enter first year, I remember one of our lecturers put up, asked, and she said, um, who's interested in mining? And Nsiki, can I tell you, like 95% of hands shut up. And I was just, I remember my hand, I was amongst my friends, I was the only one whose hand didn't go up. Because I was like, this just can't be, it can't just be mining. There's so many fields. And as I went through um, my undergrad, honors, master's, PhD now, you realize wh- how many fields there are. I mean, in the space of geology, you can, you can work in the mine, you can do data science, uh, working with different types of data sets um, and data analytics. There is uh, the fact that you can go in, I mean, academia, that's another option as well. Working in this field, uh, you can work in the lab as a lab technician if you like the geochemistry part. There's hydrogeology in the geosciences uh, where you go into the field um, looking at water samples. Um, there's geophysics. So that's, again, you can, uh, that's testing. You can look at um, pipes or, or things underground. Um, there is, let me think, there's so many things. We've got a range of things that, that can be done. I mean, you can even work in a museum uh, in the field of geosciences. You can work in, um, I mean, there's always teaching as well, which is such a, an, a great, a noble um, field as well. Um, let me think. It's, it's, it's so broad. Again, I feel like everyone just thinks of geosciences and they just think of one way, but there's so many different places. I mean, we actually have a lot of geologists who sit in a bank as well, which is quite uh, different. Uh, working in a consultancy where you, people ask you to come out to assess different um different areas uh, you can do environmental so that's again going into the field where there was mining that happened and looking at land remediation so there's quite it's it's a large you, there's a numerous career fields I know um, I still get the question from a lot of undergrads who say to me you know what can I do um, it's always funny because I remember a few years ago there was an, a first year student who said to me Will I get a job? And she was basically in one month into her first year. And I said to her, I was like, whoa, 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 let's finish this first year. Let's finish this degree first. But it's a good question. I said to her, like, there's numerous jobs. And as long as you put yourself out there, um, you know, that's also another mindset. Another thing we need to change is a lot of the times people think, you know, the job will come to them or approach them. But you need to put yourself out there and your hard work will, will speak for itself. Work hard, put yourself out there, and and if you know what you want to do, everything will work out. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, obviously, it might have been a bit shocking for you when you know somebody who's literally still an undergrad asking you, "So where am I going to work? Am I going to get a job?" But it's such a valid question because mm-hmm. we like studying is such um, a hefty investment. Like you invest a lot. Mm-hmm. Never mind, just money wise, it's already very expensive. You know. And then you invest all your time and effort and this. And after three years, four years, you have this degree, and then what? Well, <laughs> you know, you know this paper, is it worth all? Is it worth something? That's what that's what you want to know. You know, is it worth all the investment? Is it worth the time, the money, the effort, the sleepless nights, and all of this to only find myself at the end and I'm just like, wow, what a waste of a degree, you know? I mean, you're quite right, Ziki. We still, I still have, um, because I do mentorship and because I, I interact with so many students, I mean, right now I'm interacting with students across the country. And um, we still have students who come to the end of the honors year. And then it's now, it's like, what do I do next? Because, you know, it's the thing again of you, some people um, have to give back to their families. And so it's a thing of, okay, I need to work now. I don't have... So, Unfortunately, they don't have the luxury or the opportunity to go further and do masters and PhD. 
and it, it ends at honors and they're like, hey, but what's next? Where do I go next? Um, and it can be quite scary. I, I can admit it. And so um, that's why I think we need, to, we need to, it's a good thing that they ask these questions at an early stage. Um, but it's, it, it, people need to remember that there's a lot out there in the geosciences. It's not just one way, one level. There's so many other opportunities out there. You just need to make sure you put yourself out there and put your skills out there. If you're hardworking, if, you, if you're doing this, if you have skills of A, B, and C, put it out there. Um, go on to LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. It's such a great platform. You've got so many professionals there as well uh, that you can, you can uh, network with. Because that's another big thing is that students don't realize how important networking is. Um, I feel like the fact networking and science communication, it's mm -hmm. kind of like in the same field because I feel like a lot of people um, don't realize how important science communication is uh, in itself oh. because you have people who just sit there and do research or publish and then it just goes straight into the science community. They forget about all the younger people who you could have a budding geoscientist sitting at home, uh, get inspired with what you're saying. Um, and, and yet you, you, they forget that element. And I feel like that's the same with networking. People forget you need to start speaking to professionals. You need to start speaking to potential employers or uh, potential people that can give you some guidance in order to navigate into the space you want to go into. So, sorry, I just meant a whole route there. <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry. It's a conversation, it's a chat, and it's really just about getting to speak about these topics because they're important. Mm -hmm. They're important to speak about. They're important to know what can I do, especially with sciences. The reason why I really focus a lot on sciences is because it's like, so if I'm not a scientist, what else can I be with this BSc? Mm -hmm. You know? And, and that's the reality of it compared to maybe, let's say, you study something like engineering. Not even to say that engineers all get work, but it's almost like once I study engineering, I'm going to be an engineer and that will be my profession. Whereas with science, it's not like a straightforward profession of like, if you studied earth sciences, you'll be an earth scientist. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Um, and you know, that's the thing as well. Like, People need to remember when you go for a job interview, you're not, you're not necessarily going to say, oh, I'm a scientist. Okay, yes, you say you're a scientist. But don't forget that there's also other skills that come with being a scientist. The way you think, the way you uh, handle certain projects. I mean, sometimes, and I know I, I laugh about this with my supervisor. He Sometimes he says, we end up doing more admin than science being a scientist. Um, you realize there's more problem solving than do oh you're faced with this issue when you're doing your lab work or oh you're faced with this in terms of your samples and there's all these problem solving skills that come with being a scientist so like i said we have people who geoscientists who work in a bank and people think okay well how does banking and how does geosciences uh, mesh but there are people who are doing things like that and so we need to you know put your skills identify your skills and watch you um just your strengths and then put that forward and, and whatever field you want to go into, it, it will work out if you, you know, you know what you want and you're heading in there. Um, but keep in mind that it's broad. It's not necessarily one-sided. Like geosciences is not just mining. 100%, 100%. And like I've really enjoyed us going a little bit into the detail about, you know, the careers and where you can go. And the one thing you keep emphasizing is skills. You keep saying, Put your skills out there. Use your skills. And I think that's what being in the sciences is all about. It, it equips you with certain skills that allow you to almost like go anywhere and use those skills, you know, because how, like, I can't think of anybody who would think as analytically and as critically as a scientist because you kind of have to or else experiments are not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you would have to be quite creative as well. You know, some people would think that, you know, scientists are not creative at all, which is not true because if you're not creative, how are you going to know what I must mix and match to get a certain result or to get certain things? So there's so many things that come together with being a scientist, which I absolutely love that we talked about. But before we run out of time, I want us to go into the psychom part of things. <laughs> and talk a little bit about your psychom. Um, 
why did you decide I'm going to do science communication and what challenges have you faced when you decided I'm going to do this? So um, I decided that science communication uh, is a field that even though it's being done by so many individuals, I feel like it's not, the potential is not fully tapped in. I feel like it's so, so important. Um, for me, I'll be honest, it is a new space to me. I feel like I'm always growing and I'm always learning um, about science communication. And one of the biggest challenges I do find in this field is that it is um, the time. I feel like you try to balance everything because in, in doing your PhD, besides the variety of things that come with a PhD, um, in doing science communication, it can be time consuming. But um, I always find it fun. <laughs> I won't lie, it's like the guilty pleasures I have on the side um, because I get to interact, I get to share what I do with people. Um, that's definitely been one of the challenges. And I think it's just breaking that mindset again. Like I said to you, a lot of people don't really realize the importance of science communication. They basically, I mean, I witness and I see a lot of people in the field where they basically do their research, they publish their work, and then it just stays within the science community or people who have, um, who are more, if I can say, uh, who, who know what's happening in the field. They forget about that audience about reaching out to the younger people, about reaching to the, not even just younger, but people who are new to their, to a field that someone is working in. And so that's why I like the idea of science communication, because I believe that we need to talk about our science and educate people about the importance of science and, and what you're doing and how you, whatever you're doing and how it can be used in order to achieve certain goals or to do certain things. I feel like, um, it's, it's so important and what you're doing Tiki is, is amazing. By creating this platform and allowing us scientists to come on, share our work or share our um, ideas of science communication with you is fantastic. <laughs> and um, I, I, I definitely highly um, commend you on, on your work that you're doing because it's a field that I feel still needs so much to tap into and i hope that more people realize the value of this because who knows right now at the end of the screen we could have our next scientist our future scientist is going to make a breakthrough and science communication is the only way to get what's out there and to inspire someone to say hey i like this i want to do this 100 percent, 100 percent. and for you how did you decide which avenue to go with in terms of communicating your science? Because obviously social media is just one way. Social media is just a tool, right? So you can maybe be that person who goes to schools all the time and talk to school kids and tell them about science and you, you communicate your science in that way or you are always printing stuff or you're writing a blog or, um, you know, you do like a soapbox <laughs> science kind of thing and you stand in the middle of the streets and you talk about your science. How did you decide, I'm going to go this way, and I'm going to do it this way? So, um, well, I actually had to think back on this one. So for me, I basically, it started very small scale for me. Um, it was just having one-on-one -on -one sp speaking to the undergraduate students. Um, you have all these fresh faces, and they look at you and they say, oh, I'm just in geology, I'm not too sure, what, can, what are you doing? And uh, you have these people asking, you have the students, young students asking, and you tell them, and that's when you realize, wow, okay, they have, they don't really know the full potential of geosciences. And so from there for me, that's when I realized, okay, I need to talk more about my science. I need to tell people, okay, this is, there's endless possibilities in what I do. And so that was one way for me. And eventually in, um, I used to post things on LinkedIn, post things on Instagram, and I used to have friends of mine used to say to me, you know, they love it, um, they find it inspiring, and, and I used to get positive feedback. And so I realized, okay, wait, this is something that is important and that people find importance in. Um, and I myself, I'll be honest, a little bit of a selfish feel, I felt for me it was very fulfilling because I love the fact that I could inspire someone, I could educate someone. Um, I love that I can get, even if it's just sharing a piece of information that someone can learn today, like, oh, you can use calcium to understand if they were vegetarians <laughs> or herbivores. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was very fulfilling to see that, okay, posting these things, uh, it, I'm able to get the message through, open the minds of people as well, inspire them or motivate them. And so that's how I kind of then chose this avenue of um, 
you know, doing my, again, using social media as a platform, as you mentioned, but as well as speaking to undergraduate students. Um, I, I go into lecture venues, or I go into um, the practicals with the undergrad students, and I tell them a little bit about what I'm doing. I'll say, you know, hi, this is me, this is what I do. Um, and then I'll tell them there's so many avenues. Keep your mind open. Don't feel, uh, don't ever feel deterred should you not like one component of geosciences or should you yeah. feel like this is not for you because you only have one idea. Um, for me, it was very much saying there's endless possibilities. Keep your mind open because um, I know back then, if someone told me, if someone told me about my research 10 years ago, I would have said, what? <laughs> like <laughs> I wouldn't have fully believed them. Um, I would have personally myself. I would have been surprised uh, and said, "I, I mean, like only six years ago, I didn't know that this is something that can be done in this field." And so, for me to have that feeling, I want to share that with other people to say, "Yes, there is something for everyone. You just need to, you know, we just need to expose them to for, to it." Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I definitely agree with that, and I'm glad that you took the step to do it because I know it's not easy to do it as well putting yourself out there um because as soon as you do you're now you've now opened up yourself to so much criticism and so many outside voices speaking in <laughs> you know so I have to commend you for like deciding you know what I'm gonna do this and you find great joy in it you know because if you don't find joy in it it's just gonna drain you especially because you mentioned how much time it takes and how much effort you need to put into it. So it's great that you're doing it <laughs> and you keep on doing it. It's really, really amazing. Um, I really enjoyed this chat. I'm going to just ask you one last question and I'm going to let you go to enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, it's not a question really, but more like a complete the sentence. So I am a science communicator because... Okay, so... I'd like to say I'm a communicator because I believe in exposing people to the, the endless possibilities and opportunities within the science field um, to show them that the potential that there is and what can be achieved through the sciences. Um, I love to speak about the work we do and I love that uh, we can change the ideas of, of what, you know, what usually people relate to the different sciences. Um, you do, Remember, geoscience is not just mining. Biological sci sciences is not just dissecting frogs or, or, you know. So I believe that we're changing the narrative for the different sciences and we're exposing people to the endless opportunities. So that's why I believe uh, I'm, a science, I'm a science communicator because of those reasons. Those are just a few. It's, I'm sure you and I can go into an endless discussion of why it's so important. <laughs> One hundred percent. I definitely agree. I feel like we could talk for a long time because there's, there's like so many things to go into from one statement. Like one statement is like, no, no, no. We need to discuss for another fifteen minutes. Let's talk about the statement, <laughs> you know. But um, I'm going to let you go and say thank you so, so much for you know agreeing to do this, and thank you so much for sharing, um, you know, about your passion for mentorship, about your research, which is very interesting. And also about why you communicate science, you know, and I think it's very important. And I really believe that everybody who's watched this really enjoyed it and learned a lot. I have too. Um, and yeah, and thank you so much for everybody for watching as well. And thank you for having my patience with my little guest today. Um, that's just how life is sometimes. <laughs> You know, I mean, see, that's it. it. You have to make plans and go along with it, and, and eventually it'll find its way. But thank you so much for um, allowing me to come on and join you and speak about this because it's definitely an important, uh, important field, and it's an important thing that we need to do more of. Uh, we need to bring more awareness to science communication, and we need to encourage it, and it needs to be done. So thank you so much, and um, it was good to have your little uh, assistant as well. It, I'm sure, I think at the end of this, we may have a, a future geoscientist. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, too. I think so, too. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next week. And I will be saving this on IG Live so that you can share and people can watch. Thank you so much. Thank you, Siki. And yes, anyone is more than welcome to uh, message me or connect or ask questions should they have anything further. But thanks, Siki. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.